now, if you're an investor who wants income, who wants yield, then the recent decline in the interest rates means that dividend-paying stocks are pretty much the only game in town. With the yield on 10-year U.S. Treasuries now falling astonishingly below 2.5% today, I think this is a good moment to focus on the stocks that represent solid fixed-income alternatives, like the utilities. Take American Electric Power, AEP, which owns the largest power transmission network in America, along with an enormous power generation portfolio. Serves 5.3 million customers, 11 states. AEP sports a terrific, safe 3.8% yield at these levels, which is much higher than the 3.3 you'd be getting from the 30-year Treasury bonds right now. And that's without even factoring in the lower tax on dividend income. Now, AEP has consistently outperformed the utility index, and the company reported a substantially better than expected quarter back on April 25th, earning $1.15 per share, 22 cent beat thanks to the strength of their power generation business. Oh, and the stock's given us a quick 10% return since we last spoke to the CEO at the end of January. So let's take a closer look with Nick Akins. He's the president and CEO of American Electric Power. Find out what's next for his company. Mr. Akins, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Nick. Have a seat. Thank you so much. That's your thing. All right. You've been giving us a consistent return. At the same time, we know, I'm just reading the headlines, U.S. industry gears up to fight Obama's climate rules. I'm reading about the possibility of the changes the EPA wants, coupled with the fact that your company and others have been saying this could cost a huge number of jobs. Where are we on this uh, fight, and what do we have to worry about, perhaps, if anything, about the dividend? Well, I think we made a clear case about uh, what effect it could have in the future. After the mercury rules, it was clear that there was a lot more coal plants retired than what was originally anticipated. So we've done a lot already from a greenhouse gas perspective. AEP alone, 2005 numbers, 21% reduction so far, 28% by the end of next year when we retire about 25% of the coal fleet in this country. So so we're making considerable progress. We've also talked a lot about reliability of the grid. Right. When you retire this much generation, you have to be able to put transmission solutions in place and infrastructure development to make sure that we continue to operate in a very credible fashion. So. Yeah, well, today's a Forbes, Forbes article says, and the yep. biggest power polluter is AAP. But these articles all say the same thing to me. They don't ever talk about how you ever got in this situation. Right. You've got governors, the public utility commissions that won coal. You had a president that favored coal and told you to build long-term plants. So it's not like the goalposts have stayed in the same place all along. Oh, exactly. I mean, 107 year history of AEP, natural gas wasn't even prevalent right. in the Midwest part of the country, and now with shale gas it is. So, coal was really the only resource that was available other than nuclear, which we did build some nuclear, but, but nevertheless, coal has do, do, been predominantly king in that part of the country. Right, but you spent a lot of money trying to make it so the coal's as clean as you can get it. Oh, exactly. Exactly. We put scrubbers and SCRs in place to remove SOX, uh, sulfur dioxides, right. and nitrous oxides, and then uh, as well, we We've reduced greenhouse gases by conversion to natural gas and other resources. Now, at the same time, you run a business that has to be, as you said, it has to work. Right. Now, you had a polar vortex in this country, and it turns out that not only did it work for American Electric Power, but you actually were able, on a competitive basis, to make a lot of money for shareholders that we didn't think could make could happen. Yeah, absolutely, and we were very fortunate during the polar vortex that our generation actually ran. So, right. so it was an opportunity for us to get ahead, and in so doing, at the end of the quarter, as you mentioned before, we confirmed the four to six percent earnings growth. We continued to invest an additional two hundred million in our transmission effort, and then we also moved sixty million of operation and maintenance expense from fifteen and sixteen into fourteen, and then we also raised guidance. Right. So it was an opportunity for us to really focus on that. We're also seeing we saw about a about a three percent increase in the um, in the load itself. Uh, so the economy, the weather-adjusted load, seemed to, seemed to improve dramatically, and that's been confirmed even in April. Right. Now, one of the things I really loved about this last quarter, I'm just quoting from, from, your, uh, from the comms call, AP is fortunate enough to have a number of major shale regions located within our service territory, and you, you always show exactly yep. where your territory is, but right. that part of the economy is the strongest part in this country, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, in the shale counties of our service territory from Texas on up through the Midwest, uh, the, the industrial component grew at over 30 percent, so a dramatic increase. We're also seeing chemical manufacturing, as, as an outgrowth of that, continue to improve as well, and that's what's driving the growth. Well, in, in the many years we've been speaking to each other, we both had a hope that one day the, national, the natural gas and energy renaissance would actually lead to jobs. Right. 
it, it took a while, but it is happening now, right? There's no doubt it's happening. Matter of fact, we questioned during the polar vortex if our weather-adjusted normalization factors actually worked. It showed about a 3.4 percent increase. In fact, through April, it's showing a, a 2.5 percent increase. So we're we're seeing that growth. There's no question about oh, it. One last question: We know the factories get built. Uh, are we starting to see the residential, uh, both apartment and housing, that you thought would have happened if you really saw jobs coming down? Yes, housing is on the uptick. Matter of fact, for the first time, we feel like that we're, we're getting an inflection point where customer counts are improving. And I always say 20-year-olds are finally moving out of the house. Well, we've been waiting for that. Look, you've been a great story. You've been able to bridge things. And I think people would be a little more sensitive. I know I wasn't when I started the show to why a company actually is a big coal burner. It wasn't something that they necessarily might want to have done, but they sure had to do it. President wanted it. Exactly. Country wanted it. So, you know, maybe we ought to think about how quickly we want to make this go away. That was Nick Atkins. He's the president and CEO of American Electric Power. Stay with me. Coming up, whether it's the cloud or the clothing rack, Wall Street turned cold on some of the market's highest growth names. But as the summer heats up, will these same beaten down stocks thaw out? Kramer's eyeing two stocks that could hold the key.